what's going on y'all so I, guys I gotta make a video on this because dynasty mode is not as deep as what y'all praise this thing to be now listen I love college football 25 I put over I think 60 hours into the game I took off vacation to play this game I haven't made any videos I haven't done any live streams which I normally do with a lot of my fellows because I like this game but we got to be completely honest. Dynasty is not what it's cranked out to be. And I understand that EA came out and said that, listen, we're going to fix a lot of this stuff up. We're going to try to give you guys a more realistic approach. But the question is, why didn't we get this from day one? And there's a lot of things about Dynasty that I know that EA, they won't do. EA won't. EA will not add this until the following season. But we're going to talk about just the unrealistic approach about dynasty they this is a i mean again this is all about simulation this is all this is all generated but we're going to talk about this because we're going to talk about the cfp bracket this is i don't even know how the hell this even happened so if you take a look at my cfp bracket it's me and my boy moody uh we are in a dynasty league together he has the u he has ub and i have um louisiana lafayette as you guys can see that there are four non-group of four uh power teams in the college football playoff bracket now, Louisiana Lafayette, I went undefeated. Uh, I, I had a loss in the conference championship game in Appalachian State, but I beat two Power Five opponents, including one that was ranked as a top 15 team. So it's under. So again, you know, you can make a case, you can make an argument that I will make the playoffs, right? My boy Moody, as you guys can see, he went undefeated. He's 13 and 0. He beat two ranked opponents, including a top 10, uh, including a top 10 ranked uh, Michigan. So it makes sense why he's in the playoff, including even getting a seed, right? He had a phenomenal team. He's looking like Kellen Moore's Boise State football team. It makes sense. Why UAB? I'll even give UAB this, despite them being the sixth ranked team in the nation. And they didn't beat one power four team. They only beat all, they, they just pretty much beat a bunch of F, they beat two FCS schools and a bunch of, and they beat just, you know, teams in their conference. They didn't dominate them. They barely squeaked by. They ranked fourth in the country. Fourth in the country. This is not just CFP bracket. They actually ranked fourth in the country. Whatever. I'll, I'll even make an exception for them. Why is Nevada in the playoff? Nevada is 10 and 3. They just lost their conference championship. They lost to an FCS school. Why in the hell is Nevada in the college football playoff? It makes no damn sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. whatsoever. Virginia being 10 and 3 making the playoff. I mean, just look at the look at all these schools that made the playoffs. Maryland at 9 and 4 made the playoff. Now, this is the the biggest issue with college football. And I don't even I, 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 again, I understand they said that they might fix this. But this is just this just this just gives such an unrealistic approach to the game of Dynasty. Look at these records. Maryland's fifth. Rutgers is six. And nine and four, nine and three. Are you kidding? Alabama was shout out Roll Tide. Nine and three and they're second ranked in the country. Oregon's eleven and two and they're first. Like what what South Carolina was a game away from making the playoff and they finished the season seven and five. Like this is not happening. And this is every single season with Dynasty. This is every single season. This is our fourth season. Every season it's been like that. It looks like 2000 it looks like the it looks like 2004 the season where FC Porto went under when FC Porto won the Champions League and uh, 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 it's like it, it just looks different. Like this looks like the two like constantly like the 2007 college football season where it was just complete anarchy but guys it just it just gives such an unrealistic approach uh to dynasty it's actually just ridiculous but again i'm not just going to stop there because now we're going to talk about award winners right i'm going to get to the award winners in a second this guy somehow some way was that he won the best player of the year award and he won the heisman trophy my receiver had literally not only in similar stats and but I, just, I'll, I'll tell you guys in a minute as you guys can see though right this guy Dwayne Khan on my team you guys can see I have three defenders for des for best defensive back in the country you guys can see here I won my, my defensive lineman won the Lombardi award you guys can see here uh he didn't win the best defensive end but I do got a player that's a part of that category Auburn somehow, some way, got four interior offensive linemen, which, by the way, there's only three, so I don't know how there's four interior offensive linemen that makes it unless they just rotate their players, but whatever. 
you guys can see here, uh, again, I have three linebackers, three outside linebackers that are top three for best linebacker in the country. So you guys can clearly see that I have won a lot of awards. I have a lot of players that are a part of the candidates. You would think that a lot of these players would be all Americans, right? You would think that, right? That these that a lot of these players would be all Americans until you take a look at the list. Right? My boy, again, my boy Moody, he's got he's got the all Americans, right? But look at my team. None of my players that again, I won three defensive awards. None of them want none of them are for first team all American or second team all American. I got the all freshman team though, right? I was able to get that. But first team all American, second team all American, none of these players are in here. I just talked about the receiver that won the Heisman Trophy, right? We're gonna take a look at his stats and we're gonna see what he truly deserving of winning the Heisman Trophy. We'll take a look at him. You guys can see my receiver right here, 87 catches, 1,433 yards, 19 uh, receiving touchdowns. He averages 110 yards per game. Pretty impressive. We're now going to take a look at the receiving yards leaders, and we're going to see if his Heisman was justified. Now, you can see clearly that his team is Rutgers, and Rutgers uh, went nine and I think Rutgers went nine and four or 10 and three. I'm up to check, but I know they didn't go undefeated. Definitely didn't go undefeated. So this is, so first of all, this is the receivers leader right here. Uh, 1,648 yards, 19 receiving touchdowns. That's UAB's receiver. Hell, if he's a Heisman finalist, it makes sense. Or, or even if he won the Heisman, I can understand it because UAB went undefeated. They had a phenomenal season. And this guy was the arguably the best player in the country. Arguably. Here's my receiver. Second in the country, 1,433 yards, 19 touchdowns, right? And then here's the Heisman Trophy. Now, again, he had 22 touchdowns. He led the country. But he didn't, he wasn't the most dominant player for these receivers. Matter of fact, a lot of these receivers had phenomenal years. This receiver right here had 21 receiving touchdowns. He's nowhere near a Heisman finalist. So you see what I'm talking about, guys. It just. It, it gives you an unrealistic experience. Like, it gives you an unrealistic experience. And I understand a lot of people want to sit up here and say, well, franchise, well, you know, you know, you know franchise mode is, is un, you know, it gives you an unrealistic experience. Guys, that's not a, I mean, franchise mode, I'm going to be honest, franchise mode is honestly more rewarding than Dynasty. Because at least if you look at my quarterback, which I'll show you real quick, quick in a second, right? My quarterback, who had 42 touchdowns, nine interceptions, and again, I'm not, again, he, I think he had 800 rushing yards, he would be easily a top three Heisman finalist, easily. Or this quarterback right here, who had 48 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, which again, that's a, this is another unrealistic experience. Why are all these quarterbacks just dominating? All of them are dominating. Look at this. Do you know how hard it is for a quarterback in college football? I don't care how, I don't care how, I don't care the difficulty. Do you know how hard it is for any of these quarterbacks to throw for 40 touchdowns in a season? You're putting up Bryce Young numbers. You're putting up CJ Shroud numbers. You're putting up Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson. I can go on and on. Like this is, this is extremely hard. This is MVP Rogers. Uh, touchdown to interception ratio like this is crazy and then look at the passing yards do you know how many quarterbacks last year in real life put up over 3,500 yards not a lot this is normal quarterbacks dominate this game it is heavily offensive centric and this inter touchdown to interception ratio is insane if you look at it, all of them it's nuts but again look at my quarterback Look at my quarterback, right? I'm gonna, like, again, I got to scroll all the way to the top because of how nuts this is. 42 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Again, had a, had a terrible conference championship game. But you would think he would be mentioned for All-American honors or at least the Heisman. At least the Heisman Trophy. Not there. Not there at all. Matter of fact, the UAB quarterback we just talked about that had 48 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, I don't care what it is. In real life, that dude's winning the Heisman. It's not even a Heisman finalist. Guys, 
this game does not give you a realistic experience when it comes to Dynasty. And I have a lot more videos that I can upload talking about Dynasty because the, the, I'm telling you, scouting is straightforward. Recruiting in this game is easy as hell. I don't, I, I don't understand how, how anybody is having uh, d you know, difficulty with recruiting. It is very straightforward, very, very easy uh, to go approach towards it. I think coaching development is, I think coaching and team development is honestly, it's a random freaking generator. This game doesn't explain to you how to get abilities. It's all random of what happens. You can't manually uh, develop your players. And I know some people will say, well, you can hit master motivator and talent recruiter and all that type of bullshit. I don't give a crap. If my quarterback is throwing for 42 touchdowns regularly, by the way, he's a junior, and the highest overall you can give him is like early 80s, that's nuts. That's insane. That's not developing a player, right? Now, all of a sudden, I'm relying on random BS in order for a redshirt freshman to be a higher overall than him, that guy that just sat the bench. Makes no freaking sense whatsoever uh, about some of the experience that we have in this game. But Dynasty, it is not as deep as you think it is. It gives you an unrealistic experience. Again, let's take a look at the top 25 before I end the video. Do you think that this is happening anywhere close to in, to in real life? All of these eight and four, seven and five teams, and this happens every season that I've played, where there's like five or six Cinderella teams that make that that are in the discussion for making the playoffs. This is not happening in real life. And some people can say it's just a video game, but people, this is a simulation football game. This game is supposed to give us the best possible experience to what happens in real life. This is a reason why Dynasty and Franchise Mode are such popular modes is to give us this realistic sort of experience. Otherwise, we wouldn't be playing it. We'll just be playing mud all day. So stop saying it's just a video game. Because you're hiding the issues that e that this game should... Again, there is a team that is personally dedicated to, to, to fix this, to work on the basic feature mode of Dynasty. There's a team for this. And for them to just scrap everything together and give us this unrealistic sort of experience, it's just, it's bull crap. It's bull crap. I understand EA said they're going to try to fix it, and we'll see if they do do it, but the fact of the matter is, is that this shouldn't even have been an issue in the first place, and the longer you guys hide this issue, the longer you guys continue to defend EA and defend this issue, the more they're going to get away with this crap. Because this is how, because at the end of the day, that's exactly how Madden ended up being in the position that it has been. Because too many people defended that game when we all knew that it was, we all knew that that game had a lot of issues. Now look where it's at. Everybody hates Madden, despite, by the way, Madden 25's gameplay looks vastly similar to college football 25.